Hello, Goran Gizur on view, this time for our sale on the 12th of December. Uh, we're in the strong room, are we not? We certainly are. We certainly are. And um, partly because it's warmer than anywhere else in the building at the moment, but uh, mainly because there's jewellery in here. And uh, obviously we've got the fine sale coming up, which will have all sorts of grand, wonderful bits and pieces to show you. But in the meantime, Christmas is coming. And if one had a budget in mind, what could one look at in this sale and think, I've got a budget of X and I'm going to think about what the jewellery is at Gorringer's. Well, I've picked out a few options for you. It's very interesting to see what feedback we get on this. So at the lower end of the scale, I'm remembering that an estimate is um, just for Christmas, not for life, so to speak, that not all estimates are actually accurate. But anyway, we try to be most of the time. Lower end of the scale, I'm going to start with 1938. These are very pretty. So I'd be, would I be right in thinking that buying earrings are quite a, uh, not a, you know, less controversial sort of gift? I think earrings are a wonderful idea. There we go. Because they're, they're as long as you're not choosing too outrageous a style. Those are very pretty. Those are very pretty. Quite wearable. Collet set, I believe, is the wording. Um, they're in 14 karat gold, which might suggest an American um, source. Diamond set. Estimate. 8120. Yeah, I don't get that. I think they'll go for far more. Far more? Yeah, they're pretty. Like, pretty. Okay, right. right. So carrying on in the same manner of sort of modern, contemporary looking jewellery rather than some of the old stuff we have. This is lot 1923. It's nine karat gold, which is going to make it less expensive. It's on quite a nice integral chain insofar as the chain is. Well, it runs through it, right. so you could change the train, but you okay. need that kind of smooth link to let it flow. Diamond set again, uh, needs a clean. What sort of size is that? I suppose that's about a third of a carat. Um, so they, estimate. They don't match, no. No, not quite, but they, no. they sort of, they're friends. They wouldn't stand out as being too different if no. you were wearing both. Mm. Estimate they're 100 to 150 pounds. Nice. Something older. There's always the sort of lots I tend to gravitate to, but yes. not necessarily going to make people pleased if you buy them for them. No. You get lot 1890. You would get two Royal Engineers gold brooches, one with enamel. And so you better be in the regiment, I suppose. Uh, and then with it, this rather lovely. Yeah, that's very pretty. I think that's clover. Would that be lucky clover, four leaf? Uh, well, I, I'm not sure. Either a clover or a shamrock, isn't it? I think either are quite commercial, so yes. we'll say it's both. Yes. Um, in, let's have a look. Uh, it's in 18 karat gold. So all three items, estimated 120, 180, looks a bit miserable to me. I mean, that's got to be a good 150. And then these regimental brooches are not too unusual, and maybe the engineers is not as glamorous as some other regiments, and also perhaps it's also quite well populated but still that's got to be a hundred for those two so we're looking really at two to three hundred but that's that's what it says on the label yeah. another old piece a ring so rings where to you are you so too close there we go yes. that is a victorian um gold ring uh with some sort of it's, it's marked i can see it's marked inside the shank possibly with some inscriptions as well um, emerald and pearl for somebody who likes the older fashion, you know, antique jewelry. Lot 1914, estimate 100 to 120. Quite why they can be so precise, I do not know. I, do we'd, like, I like the sides very much. Yes, we'd normally say 100 to 150. Pretty, pretty yeah, sides. Detail, yeah. I think that's 150, 200 plus. Right. Lot 1907, again, older pieces, but got some charm. There we go. This is uh, gold mounted. Portrait miniature, so it will have had to have the sighties unless it's enameled. Perhaps it's enamel that one by the looks of it, actually. So not on ivory. Uh, seed pearls around the edges, quite a pretty thing. 150 to 200. Mm. Back to earrings, probably a safer place to be. Yeah. Yes, she says. Uh, these have been catalogued as white metal, oh, suggesting they're, they're white gold. Oh, they're very pretty. Quite wearable, I imagine. Yeah, yeah there we go. They've got a little wobble drop to the pearls. Yeah, they're Reasonable size diamonds, quarter of a carat or so. Estimate two to three hundred, so stretching the budget a little bit more, but perhaps getting a bit more for your money. Should one wish to spend more on one's beloved? <clears throat> uh, here's a few unusual options. Look at that, 1906. It's heavy. Mm. It's in two-color metal, which is is gold, but is is not hallmarked as such. Um, and then with this very unusual inscription saying "My Lady." 
Savatie Imoda, Fortitie in Re, 18th of August. So that's a very personal inscription. Lot 1906. So if you give that to the wrong person, they're going to say, what the hell are you doing? Why are you giving me that? But <laughs> estimate 25300. Lot 1915. There we go. There's a jolly ring. We've got three different colour. Three different colours gold. Yeah. Set with diamonds. Estimate 250. 350. 18 carat. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> size. Always think about size. This may not be resizable because the way the bands are set with the stones to then make it smaller might sort of lose the circular form of it so we do always put the size in our jewelry cataloging bear that in mind uh, if you can if you don't know the size that you need to get and you can make off with a ring bring it in and we'll use one of these a ring gauge to um, let you know what size it needs to be or if you can break off with a finger bring, bring the finger in and we'll um, we'll measure it for you whichever is easiest to get away with Carrying on, lot 1935. There yeah, you go. See, really always great. helpful ideas. 1935, Tiffany and Co. It's that magic sort of blue colour that hopefully gets people keen. Um, and here we have. You like this, don't you? You say yeah, this is I pretty. And, um, and, I, I think about my niece actually. Yeah. There we go. So, nice. how old is your niece? My niece is only 18. 18. There we go. So that she would think that's quite cool and quite contemporary, yeah, and she'd really like that it was Tiffany. Yeah. Because uh, that's probably the age range, or the, the people in their 20s and 30s that Tiffany are now sort of advertising to as much these days, isn't yeah, it? This right. is platinum, estimate 250, 350. The chain looks to be in good condition. Do always check, don't assume. Uh, it floats on the chain rather nicely, and then the diamonds themselves sort of interlink they and move. wiggle a bit. Yeah. They move, so that's rather lovely, isn't that's it? So that's a nice Christmas present. 1935, 1917. More diamonds set into a, an 18 karat gold mount. Nice and blingy though, three to 500. We're going a bit more uh, expensive as we trot up the scale. 1931, how about diamond studs? Always a safe bet. It, it is, yes. Yeah, always a safe bet. Not, not too mean looking, reasonable size. Um, here's another little insider tip. 18 karat settings, um, white and yellow gold. Um, three to 500 estimate, probably about right. Here's a little setting. If you buy something like that and you come in and have a quiet word with Roger and say, Roger, any chance you could find a box for me? He might be able to have a rummage and see if he can come up with a box that we can put them in. Can't promise anything. Can't promise how fine that box will be. But there's a good chance he'll come up with something that you've then put it in that look a bit better than just giving it in a packet. There we go. So 1931. Nice. Lastly, but not least, in ladies' jewellery. How about that? It's a bit more showy. 1951. Okay, go back a bit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 1951 is the uh, Longines 18 karat gold. Pretty, isn't it? Six to 800 estimate. Diamonds around the, the bezel. Mm. Pretty thing. Yes. Again, think about wrist size though. Can be adjusted, no doubt. Looks like there's, yeah, looks like there's at least three links. Can be, four links could be removed, but it'd be hard to make it any bigger. And finally, last but not least, the only thing I found for the gentleman. Well, or the cufflink wearer, 1946, a pair of uh, two color gold metal um, earrings set with uh, cufflinks, <laughs> earrings. You've got four earrings there, if you chop them down. No, there we are, a pair of cufflinks, diamond set, um, perhaps not height of fashion stylistically, but, but good and showy and rather fun, in at two to 250. So there we go, a host of options in the modest jewelry level, plenty more in the cabinet for you to consider yes. if none of those work. Um, so yeah, have a look at that. Remember, Christmas is coming. We'll go and have a poke about in the smalls. So here we are in the smalls. That's enough about uh, jewelry, Christmas presents. Let's get back to the serious business of buying things that we like for ourselves. And uh, treating ourselves at Christmas is always a good thing to do. How about these? If you like weird, slightly odd things, lot twelve fifty. Look at those carved pine, almost like dolls in a way. They're a little bit too loose limbed, um, but they're. they're yeah, they're most curious, aren't they? Carved out of pine, glass inset eyes, the hair, I suppose, and sheep. Yes, so it looks yes. white. I think it was a sheep. Lot twelve fifty. So there's something unusual for you. Paris? Yeah, that's classic sort of Paris street art. A little bit late in date, sixteen fifty nine. Uh, I wouldn't linger on it overly, but it's 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 all about what catches your eye. This catches my eye because it's just. I have no idea what this. There's a very large piece of ceramic, and um, 
it's so uh, lot 1289 it will be fully catalogued no doubt on the website chateau musar now there's something that i do know a little bit more about um yeah musar's fabulous it's lebanese wine um and it's really the foremost wine of, of lebanon from the bekar valley gaston hachar is, is is the man who's so famous for making wine in that part of the world and um different years have different values like all wines you've got a nice range there from 99 2005 2009 uh, so five bottles, lot twelve ninety. There's nice. a there's a nice tip for Christmas. Plenty of other goodies, but there's a Dom Perignon, ninety six, lot twelve ninety four. Sure yeah, they are, aren't they? Uh, I've, they are lot twelve ninety three. They have a look of sort of Italian glass, okay. maybe fifties, sixties. Look at the fittings, these nice little oh. pool chain fittings. Uh, pretty stylish actually. And there's, I've seen another pair somewhere in green floating about, so we might spot those. More funky Italian glass, got 1260. Could be Murano. Apparently unsigned, but a nice big lump. Yeah, as you say, a good chunk. Um, bisque heads, lot 1261, make for a sort of striking installation. You know, people are always looking for things to make their interiors stand out from other people's. Well, that would do it. Ray Campbell comes in, sees us, artist, paints wine bottles and cheeses and things here's a nice digital little one the strawberries um it's yeah it's, got, it's fully signed signed on the back lot 1655. paul's been dealing with some 1970s ceramics including this these four plaques uh russia they say as in r-u-s-c-h-a lot 1269 more of those german ceramics are scattered throughout the sale bottle of armagnac there 1270. Where do you want to go? Back over the. Should we go and poke about over the back? Yes. Ooh, gold disc. You can see all sorts of yeah, fascinating cool. things. But there's a nice tea caddy. That's, nice. That's a corker, isn't yeah, it? That's tortoise. That is tortoise shell, which is actually turtle. turtle. Very good. Lot 1450. And this shape points to it being late Regency, early Victorian. The sarcophagus shape. It's got a high gloss. If your tortoise shell is looking dull, get the baby oil out. And it brings it back to the sheen oh. almost instantly. Um, two compartment interior, traces of original <laughs> silvering. <laughs> yeah, proper used. Like Dom powder tea in there. Bone feet by the looks of things. Um, yeah, so that's quite a. I think it was our last design sale. Um, we had quite a few, didn't we? We did. So well. Yes. Did. yes, yes, that's right. Glass, there are some nice glasses in the sale uh, from a collection, including this Jacobite example with the rose, air twist stem, 1463. I think that's a, that's a sort of 500 pound plus glass. Wow. Another nice glass there, 1473, with the double knot stem and the air twist. It's all these little things that add up. More recent, how about a bit of Lalique? Is that a partridge or something in a pear tree? Lot 1472. As always, the Chinese ceramics. What's a Queen's Beast? Queen's Beast, I'm thinking they're going to be medallions or coins wow. yeah look at those ah, so those will be that sort of thing you see on the back of the sunday times magazine um there'll be silver proof coins yeah they're five pound coins um in the collector's box you sort of subscribe for one and end up buying the set over the course of time right. um and uh, there we are so they are becoming collectible those sort of things they're not just scrap but um but they're, yeah, they're probably best avoided if you can collect something else that is more readily instantly of value rather than relying on it adding up over time. Chinese scholars wrist rest while they're doing their calligraphy or what have you, 1599. At least that's what I think it is, might be wrong. Up the top here, you've got some discs. Rolling Stones rolled gold, but it's a limited number of eight of 1500. So it's not the one they were presented with by the record company. It's more of a sort of production made for fans. You've got Westlife here in recognition of sales with no numbering. And you've got Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon, which limited edition collector's series you see. So these are kind of made as made collectibles. They're not the ones that, you know, if it was the gold disc for the actual original Dark Side of the Moon, we'd be excited. Uh, why are you laughing? I just think that's so funny. Oh, Honestly. so this is 1479, and 
This is, is, I think, Chinese rather than Japanese, but the website will tell us, Dan will have told us. But the model is called a Cadogan teapot, and there's no lid. How do you get in there? How do you get in there? You fill it up from underneath. So you pour it in there, and then it comes up inside the body. You turn it over, and the liquid is trapped because that internal tube came up the middle to oh there. And then you can pour it out. That's so it's brilliant. Cadogan style, uh, after the Earl of Cadogan. So I don't know if the model came from China and he nicked it and then said it's my model or whether he came up with it and then the Chinese copied it. But it there we is, go. It does look funny. And then it's modeled as a rooty thing like a chicory or something, isn't yeah. it? 1479. So there's that. There's silver as always, decanters and photograph frames and a host of other bits and pieces under there. What else would you like? Uh, can we have a wander around? Yes, we can. Let's go and see what we can see. How about a painting of a giraffe? 1665, Colin John Chandler. Google him, he'll come up, make big money in the galleries. It's got that sort of photographic realism about it. Look at the back, there's his title and date. Medici Galleries label from Grafton Street, saying it's original oil on board. Um, yeah, that's 1665. Uh, oh, there's something about this I really like. Exo Cognac, two <laughs> bottles by Excellence de Belliard. 1333. We keep hitting on the booze. This caught my eye. 1330. Why did this catch my eye? Yeah, we're stretching you here. Yeah. So, in the fine cell, we have a Wedgwood Fairyland Luster Bowl, we octagonal do. bowl, with yes. exactly the same iridescent glaze, the same colours to the ground, the same gilding picking out a slightly fantastic landscape. This one, not quite as exotic. They haven't gone as far as putting fairies in it, but they've got the sort of fairy tale, Disney-esque castle and what have you. And then even the same orangey colour that Wedgwood use. So have we got a Wedgwood vase? No, we do not. Look underneath, Crown Ware, Royal Worcester. Okay. So Royal Worcester looked at Wedgwood and they thought they're doing rather well, knocking out their, their fairy luster. Let's copy it. And these days, I think you'd get sued for that. Maybe they did. Um, for <laughs> such direct copying of a style or pattern. But may, I don't know, maybe Worcester didn't, uh, maybe Wedgwood didn't patent it. I would have thought they might have done, so but there makes, we are. That's less, far less yeah, it's the wrong make, and right. it doesn't have the little fairies and elves, which, but, it's, but it's interesting. It's a curiosity, it's so it catches the eye of nerds like me, and, um, and maybe it spreads to other collectors. Ray Campbell's back, lot 1666 for the current bun, and 1670 with the booze. That's very much what he's about. Yeah, they're okay. I mean, yeah. Well, th these are, they're not quite like samplers because a sampler is a sample of one's sewing technique and you, you demonstrate your skills, whereas these are, are, don't have any of the alphabets and dates and verse and things. So I imagine they might well have been worked for a similar reason. Not 1345. Like the knobbly. The knobbly bobbly. With this again, this is 1346. I would say this sort of West German type. Uh, 1970s ceramics. Here we are, Germany there, West Germany, W Germany. Um, Colour, these are the same. Um, Colour, glaze, technique, um, dare I say a degree of ugliness. Um, think about that though, and of course you could also think it might be pool pottery. Those orangey colours from the 70s. This is by Sherrick, um, and it's, it's Europe Lini style so yeah funky at the time that's what 1348 those three um 1346 for the greens do you wish to press on oh, one more one you. where oh gosh oh we're so topical 1292 there we go uh they're wall pockets so you can put your bits in they're not pierced they're not going to dribble pockets. yeah they hang on the wall yeah. and they're a pocket to put dried flowers or Obviously. maybe maybe wet flowers in i don't know 1292 unmarked as far as I can see, so I don't know the make, but maybe Dan's tracked it down because he uses Google Images a lot, which is really handy to find out what things are. Giving away trick of the trade there. More wines. How about this sort of after Groes, 1686, lady with nipple and spaniel. Coloured glass, nicely framed up. First World War um, group here with the uh, memorial plaque to William Mervyn. Pollock. Pollock. 
Troa? Pollock Troa, no less. London what? Regiment. And, and the, but putting it in this whole frame with the whole um, notation there and what have you, look, 1414, a little bit different. Oil of uh, early bicyclists there. Um, this is, you know, that looks probably pre pedals isn't it? Um, we've got a number. 1690, early cycling interest. Um, lost sheep. Nice early-ish. Yeah. Did you, I don't make these things up. What do you think? 1432, re-offered from the previous sale. So low, reduced in estimate, probably because it's had a bit of, bit of work done to it at the top. But there we go. It's kind of quirky. A uh, bit of coloured glass there. Clocks, as always. Teddy bears. Root carvings. Strange. Um, Certificate of Romero Brito porcelain groups, cheek to cheek. Okay, right. They are lot 1405 yeah. with the certificate, no less. Still got fishy things hanging about. Always more paintings. Yachts, polo players, Edwardian ladies. Uh, it goes on. So, yeah, a really, again, as ever, Dunlop radio tile thermometers. As ever, it's all here. So, come yes, along and have a look. This one will be a double view, so you'll be able to view the fine sale as well as the um, weekly sale, so you get two for your money. And uh, if you can't find something here you like, well, I won't eat my hat, but I'll be disappointed. So anyway, come along and have a look. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you very much.